Welcome to the cabin. Happy New Year, everybody. You know what they say, New Year, New Army. For this occasion, I've decided to get back to a game from my childhood. Before we start, please consider giving the video a thumbs up if you like it, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about future content. With that said, let's get to it. October 2001. I was 13 and had been into the Warhammer hobby for about a year. Alongside this interest was my blooming admiration for Professor Tolkien's work, after having read some of his great works such as The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. So when Games Workshop announced they would be producing a strategy battle game based on the upcoming film trilogy by Peter Jackson, I naturally went all in. I spent hours painting the miniatures, many of which were sculpted by the Perry Twins. My go-to models were the evil forces, while one of my friends preferred the good guys, so we spent many adventurous weekends playing the different scenarios from the rulebooks. As time went by, my friend and I parted ways and embarked on our own separate journeys. I started focusing more on Warhammer 40k, and eventually I dropped out of Middle-Earth strategy battle game entirely. However, the music of the Ainur kept humming its alluring tune. Moreover, watching content from Zorpa Zorp, Battle Camper, and Conquest Creations, to name a few, inspired me to once again revisit this magical world. The timing couldn't have been more perfect. Games Workshop just released a new starter set with an updated rulebook. Did I get this new box set to get some good savings on the minis? No. Did I get one of the new battle hosts, which also have good value? No. Surely I at least chose a force with troops made in plastic? Eh, no. See, after rewatching the Hobbit trilogy, I was hooked on Azog's army. I especially liked the orcs marching out from the cesspits of Dol Guldur. Gandalf referred to them as Moria orcs in the film, and he described them as fighters bred for war, which is kind of weird when you compare them to Moria orcs from the original trilogy. But ah, well. When I first saw the Battle of the Five Armies, my opinion was that it had too much CGI and all the action was very over the top. However, as time passed and after rewatching it several times, I've become a bit more forgiving towards it. I really enjoy the design of these Dol Guldur orc soldiers, and Weta Workshop actually designed a lot of practical armor, weapons, and prosthetics for these orcs to complement the CGI. I decided that Azog's Legion would be my army. I purchased my Dol Guldur orc soldiers from Games Workshop, but confusingly enough, these miniatures are called Gundabad orcs in the game. The discrepancy in the name is due to some changes that happened in the film that occurred after the miniatures had already been made. The Gundabad orcs, led by Bolg in the film, look a bit different to Azog's orc soldiers. Alright, let's go to Games Workshop and check out the minis. Hmm. Many have the exact same pose. Oh no. Could it be? Finecast! Yep, the Gundabad orcs are all resin miniatures made with the dreaded Finecast method that Games Workshop doesn't really mention by name anymore. Well, these are the orcs I want, so I'll just have to make it work. Luckily, Forge World also produces an upgrade kit for the Gundabad Orcs, which features alternate heads, swords, and shields, as well as a banner and trophy poles. With this and some conversion work of my own, I'm sure I can make a large group of them look good. When working with resin, I always begin with properly cleaning all the parts. I put them in an ultrasonic cleaner with some lukewarm water and dishwashing detergent, letting it run for a few cycles. This is to remove any mold release agent that could be left from the casting process, since this stuff could affect the miniature later when I start gluing it together and painting it. Just to be safe, I also scrub each part with a brush to make sure they are completely clean. With that out of the way, let's have a proper look at the models. As you can see, fine cast miniatures have a few small parts molded onto them that are not supposed to be part of the sculpt. I've heard people call these gussets, and I suggest spending a few minutes finding and removing these. Firstly, I clip the parts from their sprues, making sure to cut as close as possible to where the feed lines meet the actual miniature. When the parts are off the sprues, I again use the clippers, this time even closer to the miniature. Secondly, using a hobby knife, I cut away what's left of these connections. 
The same goes for the gussets. and other parts of excess material. I then use the blade to scrape these surfaces, which helps to get rid of uneven parts left from the cutting. Scraping also works for removing mold lines, or you can also use a mold line removal tool if you wish. Finally, I looked the parts over one more time and used hobby files to get everything looking as smooth as possible. To prepare the legs for attaching to the base, I drilled a hole in one foot using a pin vise with a 1mm drill bit. I then attached a 1mm brass rod with super glue, cutting it off a few millimeters below the foot. This pinning technique, together with using alligator clips on rods, help with handling the miniatures when priming and painting them apart from their bases. I use super glue when working with resin, and Finecast in particular bonds really quickly with this type of glue. Also, make sure to use an old, clogged up bottle of glue and get way too much glue on the part. When gluing spears like this, I find it best to attach one part first and allow it to fully set before gluing on the second. The parts fit better together this way. Don't worry if the spear gets slightly crooked. Pretty much all of the spears and swords are already crooked from the casting process, and here's a quick way to fix it. Simply submerge the weapon in some hot water for a little while. It doesn't need to be boiling hot, but it should be hot enough for the weapon to be slightly pliable. You can also use a hairdryer for this. Next, straighten the weapon with your fingers until it achieves the desired shape. Finally, soak it in some cold water to allow it to set. Finecast, like other types of resin, can sometimes have small air bubbles left in it from the casting process. This can be fixed by applying a small bit of green stuff on the area affected by bubbles. Then simply smooth the putty using a sculpting tool, blending it to the rest of the surface. Now it's just a matter of redoing these steps on my entire pile of Finecast orcs. Ugh. Let's speed that up a bit, shall we? While that time-lapse is doing the work for me, here's a solution to another problem I encountered with these minis. There are only six different poses for these orcs, and I plan to paint almost 40 of them. That will make for one boring looking unit. Unlike many multi-part plastic kits, fine cast boxes usually don't come with different ways to assemble the models. But that doesn't stop you from converting and customizing them on your own. The Forge World kit that I mentioned earlier provides a straightforward solution to this. It allows you to swap out parts for added variety. In this example, I cut off the head and sword from the original miniature and replaced them with upgrades. I also added a trophy pole to the back, and as you can see, this adds some new flavor to it. But I want to take things a few steps further, to get my army looking the way I want it to. As I was working on quite a number of conversions, I made a chart to help keep an overview of what part goes where, ensuring that no two minis looked exactly alike. Another idea I had was to swap spears and swords between bodies. Here you can see the original spear wielding model to the left, and the new version with a sword and shield to the right. I also tried swapping torsos and legs where possible. On screen are another couple of examples. I did this for about a third of my orcs, and these are probably my favorite models out of the whole bunch. They weren't meant to go together like this, but with a little cutting, scraping, and minimal sculpting, it worked like a charm. The final touch was to add even more variety, focusing on the heads. I wanted to include some bare heads without helmets, and after some digital mock-ups, I decided that the Urukai Scouts kit would provide the best source. I cut off the plastic heads, including the hair, and whittled away the bottom part to make them fit the fine cast bodies. Furthermore, in the Hobbit Chronicles books by Weta Workshop, they talk about using the helmets to distinguish individual orc soldiers from one another. If you freeze frame the film and the behind the scenes clips, you'll see that there is a huge variety of designs that are only on the screen for a few seconds. I spent quite some time taking screenshots of these different designs and putting them together in a document. Using this, I was able to customize existing helmets on the miniatures to represent this variety. Some of the time, cutting away parts and filing down some details was enough, like in this example. 
However, other times I needed to sculpt new details, like in this example. For this particular helmet, I ended up using the lower part of the Forge World Captain head, along with the crest at the back of this other Forge World helmet. I then added a skull face from a Chaos Space Marine backpack unit and carved a new silhouette into the crest, as well as separating the pieces. With some green stuff to tie it all together, I had a relatively screen accurate helmet design. Since this was quite time consuming, I made a mold using instant mold, so I could cast the part with Milliput and make however many copies I wanted. With that, my Dol Guldur orc soldiers are pretty much built and ready for paint. I still have a little bit of sculpting and weapon bending left to be done after doing these showcase shots. I'll finish those before continuing to the undercoat stage. See you in the next video in this series, where we embark on the adventure of painting these awesome minis. Until then, please subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified about future content. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, and if you have any thoughts, post them in the comments down below. I'll see you next time, good luck with your miniatures.